<laughs> All right, today we're going to unbox the G Pro Superlight, which is the iteration on the G Pro. And as you may or may not know, the G Pro is kind of the go to gaming mice. It's what most gaming pros use. Uh, there's certainly a variety of choices, but this is the one you'll see the most. It's been the most consistent, it's got a great sensor, pretty good buttons, okay reliability, but it just works, it feels good, every button feels good, uh, and it does what you need it to do, and it's been one of the lightest mice of its form factor since it came out. But now, it's even lighter. What used to be 80 grams is now 63 grams. So let's get into this, I'm so excited. We have the white and the black. I don't know if it's a special edition white. Uh, on the previous G Pro, there was the Ghost, which was white, uh, and that was just like a limited time thing. So hopefully they have two options, even though I definitely will not use white. My hands are just too gross for that. I had a PS5 controller in my hands all weekend, and by the end of the weekend, it was definitely a shade dirtier. All right, so here we go. Pretty nice feeling box. We got all the eSports team logos on the side because you have to know this thing is hardcore. It's a pretty nice minimal box. This is the hardest part of every unboxing. It's like, it's like a drum roll, but I'm breaking stuff. And there it is. It's a, it's a G Pro. It looks exactly the same. At first glance, I would have a hard time telling the difference. Uh, first hold, I have a hard time telling the difference. It feels like about the same shape. The scroll wheel is a different color, which I like. This nice little white accent. I think that looks good. Um, buttons feel the same. The side buttons are just about, the, I think they're the exact same size. Um, so as I said, this mouse is super light. It's almost 25% lighter than the previous G Pro, which was already really light. Uh, and in order to get it quite that light, they had to obviously cut that weight in many places. So they cut like five grams off the PCB of the mouse. Uh, they cut a little bit off the body of the mouse. Um, they took out the power play magnet. So I'm gonna test later if there's still some form of power play or if it's just straight gone in this. Uh, yeah, it's gone. Yeah, sorry you and the 12 other people using it. I don't doubt it, but uh, how many of you in the audience are actually using power play? I wanna know. <laughs> you said that. <laughs> All right. I guess before we go too deep in the mouse, let's keep unboxing. Let's see what else is here. So you get another little box inside a box. Boxception, my favorite kind of exception, I guess. Ooh, nice. That's it for the box box. So you get your dongle, your Pro X dongle. Whoa, X. That's how you know it's hardcore. Like the previous G Pro, it goes right into the mouse, which I think is an absolute necessity on wireless mice or else you will lose that dongle anytime you move it. Um, it has a little adapter, which is nice, so you can use the charging cable and uh, plug in the dongle here so that you can have it closer to your mouse. Uh, I find that I generally wanna have my dongle above the desk sometimes. Maybe it's just like a psychological thing, but having the proximity, nothing in between, uh, makes me feel better about it. So that's what I'm gonna do today. This cable feels okay because it's not uh, a wired mouse and you're not expected to use it. It's just like a, a plastic rubbery kind of feel. Uh, that's fine. What's kind of annoying is micro B. We're past that, we're way past that. Consoles are USB-C and I get it. Micro B is a lighter connector uh, than type C, but I think I'm ready to make that sacrifice of like one or two grams to get type C on everything. I'm sick of having all these different connectors the perfect connector exists. It's called USB-C Logitech. Get it. <laughs> All right, inside here we have more things. Oh, that's cool. So inside you get another little uh, replacement for this disc, for this cover, but actually has the glide, the extra glide pad, which I think is really cool. I think it's, it's actually, I think it's pretty cool that they've uh, designed this mouse. Even though it's lighter, they put more glide pads. So you can see in comparison to the previous one. Yeah, that's sweet. Like even around the sensor, they have that. Uh, the sensor is the Hero sensor. It's 25K DPI. So this sensor, the Hero sensor is the classic Logitech one. It's great. This one does up to 25,000 DPI, um, but higher DPI isn't what matters. It's 
it's the IPS. So this, this does 400 inches per second, and that's how fast it can track movement. Higher DPI isn't actually an indicator of the quality of the sensor. Um, yeah, in terms of body, if you've held a G Pro, you've basically held this, just remove 20 grams. Logitech really does make some of the best mice. So also in the box is some kind of texture rubber pads. Um, so if you want, if you don't like the texture of the G Pro, you could put these on. Um, it's a lot stickier. I think that would kind of get gross pretty quick. I wouldn't use that. Yeah, it's up to you. G sticker cleaning pad, I guess. All right. I think that's it for the outside. Uh, I'm really excited to plug it in, but before we do, let's talk about our sponsor, Vessi. Vessi footwear is known for being waterproof and lightweight and comfortable. Their Dymatex material makes it breathable too, and it'll keep your feet cool in the summer and warm in the winter. They have everyday styling that fits most occasions. They're gonna keep your feet dry for the wet future months that are coming up. Oh, so miserable. They have a Black Friday sale right now, so don't miss out. If you did miss out, you can still save $25 with our offer code shortcircuit at vessi.com slash shortcircuit. All right. So that's what the white one looks like, like the black one, but white. I'm just too nasty of a human and I eat at my desk. I, I can't I can't do the white. Before I plug it in, I actually wanna weigh the G Pro Superlight versus a bunch of other mice. Uh, one of the things that's kind of a little unfortunate in terms of cutting weight is they've reduced a little bit of the modularity of the original G Pro. Uh, on the original one, you had buttons for the right hand side as well that you could remove and put covers. Oh no. <laughs> okay, here we go. But in order to keep the body as light as possible, they've just removed that. So it's only a right-handed mouse now. Okay, let's see if it, these claims are true. They say it's under 63 grams, so Somewhere between 62 and 63 makes sense. That's still super light. Like you have to go, to get anything lighter than that, you have to go wired honeycomb. And even th like even the Steel Series Aerox 3, which is a pretty sweet mouse because it's got a bunch of high-end gaming features and its honeycomb is quite a bit more heavy. I think it's like in close to 70. They rated it at 66 grams. So it's heavier even with the honeycomb design. What's that one? Oh, the oh man, this is the Model O wireless. We're gonna make a video on this, so get subscribed right now if you don't wanna miss that. I'm actually really excited about this. Let's compare this as well. 70 grams, Some still heavier, even with the honeycomb shape. Do you, do you feel four grams? Oh gosh, no, you're not gonna feel four grams. And like, it's nice to have, and if you're at the, the competitive edge of gaming, you'll want the four grams lighter, the six grams lighter. I'm impressed. Let's compare it to the Razer Viper Ultimate. So that's 70, I think they say that it's 74. Um, yeah, probably with the dongle. Uh, and I've been on record saying I don't like this mouse. It doesn't feel good. I really don't like the way the textured plastic is, so we're still gonna compare it. But man, ooh, this is fun. This is like Christmas mousing. Christmas morning, mouse morning. So like an apple, an average apple is like 100 grams. And so if you can imagine an apple in this hand, take 40% off. <laughs> And then you have this one. So while we're setting up the game, one thing I'm curious about, and I, is not in the scope of this video, is that the Logitech G Pro, and actually a lot of Logitech mice uh, that use the Omron 20 million switches, we're having some double click issues. Uh, that's because they're overvolting the switches. And so it's not a mechanical failure, it's an electrical failure. And so a lot of people were having to get replacement either switches or mice. Um, and I haven't seen anything in the documents to say that they've changed that. So that's definitely something to keep an ear to the ground about. In terms of durability, the previous one was rated for 250 kilometers of use. So I calculated that's like 615-ish, uh, like 16-inch swipes across a mouse pad. So, you, so I don't know, you can you can try and do that yourself, but I don't really wanna do that 615,000 times. Oh, the, the last thing I wanted to see before was the scroll wheel. And so if you look, at the scroll wheel. They look similar, but this one looks like it's got a little bit more of a gap. And maybe you can tell over this way. And so yeah, the click wheel still feels good. And I know a lot of people really like the G Pro click wheel. This one just, the, the original one feels a little more uh, solid. Like this one feels a little mushier and like it's such a small amount that it might just be my brain but I think people will find it like five, 
5, 10%, a little bit uh, softer through those clicks. This might be too new of a mouse. This mouse, we're unboxing this mouse before it comes out, so it might not be part of the G-Hub software. So there you go, early, uh, I mean, as early as possible adopter, beware. feels fast. Man, it's so smooth. These extra glide pads actually do make a difference. This is this is the smoothest mouse I've ever used. It, I'm gonna have to get used to it for this setup, but dang. I uh, I know I often say this and I'm gonna like try taking them home, but I'm absolutely gonna buy this mouse. <laughs> like, not even a second thought. All right, so we're gonna give the original G Pro a try. So immediately off the bat, it's a little bit more heavy. Again, it's like, it's whatever, 20-ish grams. It's not a huge deal. But I'm really noticing the lack of glide pads. The fact that the glide pad is so much smaller makes it feel a little rough. I'm feeling the texture of the table a little bit more. And maybe that doesn't really matter to you, but I'm uh, I'm starting to really appreciate the better the better glide pads on mice. So these glide pads are actually made from PTFE material, which is the same stuff that they put on Teflon pans for it to not stick. Wow, yeah, this mouse is amazing. I am uh, kind of really blown away. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, all right, so let's now try the SteelSeries Aerox 3. This is a mouse I haven't tried as much, but I've heard good things and it has all the right specs. I mean, it has the same problem I have with a lot of mice that the side buttons are too small and I actually use them for like melee and grenade. But overall, it feels pretty good. It definitely feels a little bit cheaper, but it is cheaper. It's like $20, $30 cheaper than the, the, the original G Pro. Jono, do you know how much the uh, new G Pro is going for? So the super lights are gonna be $149.99. Yep. Yeah. So in terms of shape, it's fairly similar. It's an ambidextrous mouse. So you can see it comes out both on both sides. The palm goes a little bit higher, so I find I can cup it a little bit more. Um, and I, I can kind of like steer the mouse with just like the top of my palm, which on my 403 is what I currently do. So it feels a little more comfortable. The plastic's definitely a lot less high quality. You can see in comparisons to, I don't know, I'll take this one. You can see probably in the shimmer of the light, the way that this kind of is a more uniform matte and this one is a little bit rougher. It doesn't feel bad, but it certainly feels cheaper but man, this one is RGB up the wazoo. But it eats into battery. Like on the G Pro, it's like 60 hours without RGB and like 40 with. So I would rather have the battery life anyway. But uh, let's try this one. Oh boy. I mean, I'm not gonna blame missing the shots on the game or on the mouse. I blame it on me. But uh, yeah, in terms of like build quality, it's just not as nice. It's heavier. I don't like these buttons as much. Um, it's a good mouse, and like if you got a good deal on it, I would say go for it. It's like some people just like the honeycomb. Um, in terms of like palm being cooler, the honeycomb's always going to be better because there's just more place for the heat to go. So this mouse is 129 American. The G Pro original is also 129 American, and the Superlight's 149. Uh, and so for that twenty dollars, I would definitely say the build quality and uh, the overall experience of smoothness is definitely worth it. All right, let's do the Viper. No, let's not. I just don't like the Viper. Ugh. This this might be the best mouse money can buy right now. It's super light. The construction quality is excellent. The 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 durability of the buttons remains to be seen, but in terms of an experience for just gaming, pure gaming. This is as good as it gets right now. I'm uh, I'm really excited to get one for myself and finally switch over my 403 to this beast. So thanks for watching. Uh, please get subscribed, please like this video. If you wanna watch more content like this, I've unboxed a lot of mice on this channel. Uh, most recently, the Model D-, minus, which is a wired mouse, but I also really liked. But uh, yeah. Be on the lookout for this when it's out. It's going to be worth it.